So, but back on this notion of, um, since we're on the subject of cars, uh, you know, another application that, you know, puts a bunch of these principles into work, you know, softer above the level of a single device, uh, is Uber and, and rethinking workflows. Uh, you know, think about that wonderful experience. You've got a phone, it knows where you are. The driver's got a phone, it knows where he is or she is. And then Uber has this, uh, you know, memory, this brain, which is identifying that, routing, telling everybody how to get together. That's a system. It's softer above the single level of a single device. Uh, it's providing a whole lot of context without you having to uh, do a whole lot. You know, when you when you first check it, it, Uber does a decent job of figuring out where you are. Maybe you have to correct it a little bit. Uh, they've done a pretty good job of applying these principles. But there's another principle that Uber uh, uh, brings up, uh, kind of a really interesting thing. You know, when you use Uber, you're asked to rate the driver. The driver is also asked to rate you as a passenger. Now that's a really, really interesting uh, thing. And Uber is pretty ruthless about weeding out people who uh, get bad marks from their passengers. Now you think about your experience of, if, if, how many people here have actually driven in an Uber? Fair, fair number. It's a pretty good experience, isn't it? It's kind of one of those magical things like going into you know, a square-enabled coffee shop or going into an Apple store, you go, whoa, this is really good. You know, and you compare that to your experience with a, with a cab driver. You know, you have, you know, the guy's, uh, you know, playing loud music, he doesn't know where he's going, uh, you know, all kinds of terrible experiences. You know, you get an Uber driver does that, they're out on their ear. And you think about the old school way that uh, you know, taxi cabs are regulated. Well, we're going to test people. We're going to figure out who's approved to do this. You know, Uber has actually done one better. You know, there may be some <laughs> regulatory issues there that need attention, but there's a lot of ways that we're starting to see reputation systems that we've seen on internet uh, applications start to have uh, relevance in the real world. And I think that's, I, I, I'm not putting that as a principle. I'm just asking it as a question. I think it's, it's one of the great interesting unanswered questions in, in the government area. Uh, but the, the, the lessons, uh, my, my next lesson that I really wanted to highlight from Uber is to close the loop. You know, what makes that Uber experience so different is that you know when your cab is going to arrive. <laughs> you know, when, when you, let's say you want to go to the airport and you call a cab, you never know. Are they going to show up? Are they close? Uh, you know, did they forget? Uh, you know, you're standing on a street corner in the rain. You don't know how long it's going to be. Think about Uber. You know, you can sit in the restaurant. You can sit in the coffee shop. You get a text when the driver is outside. You know, Uber has closed the loop. Uh, you want to know where they are? You can actually look on the map and you can watch their progress towards your location. You know, Uber has you know, closed the loop. And I got that framing from Chris Saka, who's an early investor uh, in Uber. Uh, he was also Google's head of special projects for a long time. And he said, what I learned from Google is to only invest in things that close the loop. And I think that's a really, really important principle. And if you're doing a startup, think about what loops you can change. You know, that's another you know, piece of, uh, you know, how, how do you make things smarter so that, that uh, you, you, don't, you don't have these open-ended uh, systems where you don't really know what you're going to get.